Well, good afternoon. I hate to interrupt chatter and socialization and stuff. But it's good to see y'all. Um, one, I got a couple things I want to go over with you, and just want to welcome you. I need to tell you a little bit about personal. I don't know if that's me or not. Maybe it's a hearing aid. Not sure. Um, but I made it back from my trip. So Costa Rica was beautiful. People were wonderful. Food. Unbelievable, probably the freshest food I've ever had. And I had a, a funny situation where I was eating this chicken, probably the best chicken I can remember eating. And I was talking to the lady uh, and I was uh, telling her about it and she was funny. She, she didn't speak English very well, but she pointed outside and here's the chickens running around. She goes, oh, okay, there you go, there you go. Um, but the weather was great, uh, scenery was gorgeous. I can't say enough about hospitality, it was over the top. But I was telling people, I just came from West and I was telling them, you know, there's nothing like your own bed, right? Your bed that fits you and your own pillow that's kind of contoured to your, to your body and everything else. But we, my wife and I did make one mistake. So we didn't get attacked by any monkeys. So that was good. We did see a lot of monkeys, a lot of nature, just beauty. I did not see a sloth. I could have paid $50 a person to see a sloth, but I refused to do that. It's just not right, right? So I didn't do that. But we made a mistake um, as we were traveling, their mother, not mother, their family restaurants are called sodas. They call them little soda, soda stands or whatever. So we were driving and we said, let's have lunch. And we stopped at a soda and uh, people were very nice. And uh, so any of y'all ever had ceviche, cerveche, right? Ceviche, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, shrimp that kind of cooks in its own juices. You can probably see what I'm doing when I go with this. Anyway, you know, it kind of ferments and it kind of cooks versus cooking it on a grill. So my wife got that. I don't know what I got. And my wife, my daughter got something else. So my wife ate three quarters of it. She gave me the other quarter. It's good. It's good. Well, four o'clock that morning, um, I wake up and I look and there's my wife. Her eyes are bigger than mine. She's like, and we were like, so you know what we were thinking? Who's going to get to the bathroom first? So uh, my poor wife was literally out for, again, what's said here stays here. Do not tell my wife I'm sharing this. Uh, but for 24 hours, my wife was out. And for me, it hit me about uh, the day after. So part of our trip was spent just enjoying our hotel room and um, yeah, and not wanting to smell any food or anything else. But it was uneventful, great to be home, um, and, and again, just, just, just beautiful people. You know, I will tell you one thing. Uh, that I found very interesting and take this for what it's worth. Uh, when I say my wife and daughter and I, we don't do a lot, we do travel. That's our thing. We love to travel and I, I love to get her exposed to the different cultures. Anytime I've traveled, except for this one, people always want to talk to me about America. What's it like, you know, the home of the free, this, this. Not one single person said anything to me about the United States. And when I say that, it was contentment. Everybody we talked to was very happy. Just where their country, the beauty, everything else. There was a lot of poverty. I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a lot of poverty, but people seemed happy. And I just thought that was interesting that, you know, just sometimes we have all this and we forget that we're very blessed and here people have little and they realize the gifts that are around them. But anyway, glad to be home, glad to be home. So a multitude of things to talk about. I did do something interesting. I actually wrote my notes this time. So it's good, uh, no particular order, so it may be a little all over the place, but I'm gonna start kind of at a holistic, and I wanna talk a little bit about COVID. Um, so whether you realize it or not, Guilford has had uh, somewhat of an outbreak in our Fry um, area. Um, I think we're up to like eight residents. Um, and again, these residents are vaccinated, boosted. Most of y'all in here are, are vaccinated. Most of y'all probably have had some type of booster. I'll talk about that later. We, I think we have one resident independent living that did test positive and we're working through that contact tracing. Uh, they're doing testing, skilled nursing, but it's still out there, people. So when I tell you whether you're vaccinated, boosted, uh, it, and people that are getting it, they're having symptoms. So be aware of that. It's not one of these things, oh, I didn't even know I was you know, sick. So if you're not feeling 100%, uh, please, I'll ask you, and I know it's pollen season and everything else, but just try to be mindful of being in large crowds. Uh, if you're not feeling well, just maybe hang out in your uh, room or your apartment to some extent or be in an open type area. Um, but let's just continue to be vigilant and worst case scenario, if you don't feel 100% comfortable, let's, let's continue to wear, wear a mask. 
So uh, I think Susie did a great job in the polls where she talked about the Presbyterian Homes is going through a rebranding. They changed their name. They're now called Bright Spire, one word, Bright Spire. And so this is a note telling me I did something wrong. Um, that uh, there was actually the letter was two pages that we were going to distribute. And we read it and we're like, oh Lord, two pages. And then Susie did her magic. She said, I think I can get the gist of it. I think she did a great job. If you want to read the two-page letter about their name change and how they came about and the purpose behind it, um, the main thing I need you to understand, their name change has no impact on us. We're friends' homes. Their other communities are still named their communities, River Landing, Glen Eyre, Scotia Village. It's just the corporate office uh, was trying to separate themselves from other Presbyterian home names in the United States which some of them get a bad rap and people kind of associate with them and they want to kind of stand on their own. So they are now called Bright Spire. I've been with Preston Homes for 22 years, so I will probably slip from time to time, but I will be calling them Bright Spire and when we talk about it, that's how we refer to them. Um, one of the things I want to share with you that they were letting me know that our positivity rate in Guilford County is now back up to 15%. Okay, that's not good. That's not good. So, you know, we got down low, 3%, 5%, but it, it's happening. So spread is happening. So let's continue to be vigilant, continue to stay safe, wash your hands. You know, if you're out and about, wear a mask, because um, we do not want to go back to um, the way things were. All right, let me give you a quick update on construction. Um, construction is going well. We are going to... I can't make stuff up as it relates to, you know, we've talked about this time and time again about the regulations that we're under. Um, and so we uh, have been, had plans approved. We've had multiple inspections, but the pool is now going to open early July. And what happened was the most recent inspector was in the chemical room and noticed that the outlet, wherever an outlet is around here, was not the, wasn't the code. And remember, these plans have been approved. Um, it needed to be PVC or something, something weird, I don't know. And they said, it, you know, I'm not gonna approve it until it's, it's the code. That particular outlet is not something you get at Home Depot, seven week lead time. So then we try to do what we do, interject logic, and we said, look, there's no way that is going to corrode in seven weeks. Can we not go ahead and get approval? And then when it comes in, we'll change it out. Everything will be great. No, it's not up to code. They also told us in our courtyard, we have a fire pit. Uh, and they're saying that because I'm being facetious, so just bear with me. Uh, because y'all obviously don't have common sense to not put your hand in an open flame that we have to put a cage around the fire pit to keep y'all safe. Now, forget that people are building fire pits every day in their backyard. Uh, so right now we've got this $10 weird looking grate that's over to keep you from sticking your hand in an open flame. Um, so this is what we're dealing with now. And the hard part is with regulations is you don't have a lot of say. You say, thank you. Okay, we'll do it. All right, all that to be said, we, the Wellness Center will open, as of right now, on Monday, May the 23rd. That's the Wellness Center, that's the courtyard, all that good stuff. I will tell you, there are several things that we're still waiting on. There are actually light fixtures. There's some light fixtures that are back ordered. Some of our audio visual, uh, they're still having some problems with chips. Uh, is not 100% operating. So we're not gonna do a formal grand opening to probably July, but we want y'all to have access to it. What you will not have access to is the pool, which opened early July, and the hub, the dining venue, it will open on Tuesday, June the 14th. Tuesday, June the 14th. I think I shared with you last time, we're gonna do a soft opening, end of May, 1st of June. We're gonna invite residents to come, have a meal, get acquainted, get oriented, more to come on that. Um, we're still looking at mid-August for the Cobles dining room to open and the bridge will open on September the 1st. Uh, new residents will be moving in on the farm. 
in 11 cottages that will start moving in in August. Uh, that'll be finished by September. The eight townhomes, they will be moving in October, November, and the new Villa 54 Villa Apartments, they'll start moving in December and January uh, of this year and next year. Let me talk a little bit about staffing. Um, director of maintenance, we're actually doing interviews today for our director of maintenance. Uh, we'll be doing final interviews the week of the 16th with the hope that we will be making an offer that week with uh, this man or woman coming on as our new director of maintenance, hopefully sometime in mid-June. Ricky Joe, mo my, most of y'all may remember Ricky Joe. Uh, he used to be here for a long time. Uh, he then went over to West and was the supervisor of West. If you know Ricky Joe, he's always wanted to be a fireman and he was actually, he does volunteer fire fighting and he was recognized uh, by the Burlington Fire Marshal at a fire and was pulled to the side and said, have you ever thought about being a full-time fireman? And went down a path, they made him a job offer and he's accepted. So Ricky Joe uh, has been with us like eight or nine years, will be leaving us on May 26. And uh, we wish him all the best. Uh, he will be helping people in other ways. So we, we wish him um, all the best. His position is gonna be held open for a while because we wanna get the director of maintenance on board but that person have the ability to um, hire the supervisor that will be replacing Ricky Joe. I think I share with you, and if I'm not, I apologize, uh, the new wellness coordinator. So Teresa is gonna have some help finally. New wellness coordinator, her name is Kayla McVane. Uh, we, did I say it right? Bain. Bain, not Vain, but Bain, McBain. Um, we stole her from Pennyburn. And I tell you, she is, it's, good, it's a good steal. Uh, she is awesome. She'll be starting with us the week of the 16th. So look forward to you getting to meet her and know her. She's a dancer, but she's, she's involved in a lot of different types of programming. And uh, she came with very high uh, comments from the, the Penny Burn team. We finally have a concierge. So we've been, woohoo, right? Um, so as you know, Charlie, we've been trying to fill this role for a while. Um, we have a new concierge. She will be starting on Monday, May 23rd. It's an internal transfer. You probably do not know who she is, so you're going to have to trust me on this. She comes from Friends Homes West. She is our environmental service supervisor. Her name is Bernadette Graves. Bernadette's been with us 20, 21 years. Is that right, Angela? 20, 21 years, and she is a beautiful woman. Um, she is, uh, her, she's got a great personality. She loves the residents. She's done a fabulous job in her role as the EVS supervisor at West, and she's excited about taking this role on. So she gave Daryl three weeks notice. She will be uh, here on the Guilford campus, but she'll be supporting all of uh, friends' homes in that role. And so uh, look forward to her having her own right now. There's a multitude of people that are stepping in in the absence of Charlie, and I just want to say thank y'all for y'all's continued patience as we work through all that. But we're excited about having Bernadette join us on May the 23rd. I'm gonna to switch to, to some, some sad news. Um, and most of y'all know about Teresa's dad passing, um, Giles. So Teresa's dad had an unfortunate accident um, several weeks ago, and, and he did pass away uh, this past weekend. Um, and the funeral's gonna be held down in Ramsour. I think on, it's on Saturday, uh, and Teresa appreciates y'all's support and prayers uh, during this time and, and, and with her sister and just their family. Uh, those that know Teresa, I've never really met her dad, but I feel like I know the man because she tells me stories about him all the time, and he's an interesting bird. I mean, he's got, she's got some great stories about her dad, um, and, you know, that was they, they were buddies. Um, and so uh, she's taking it very hard but she does appreciate your thoughts and, and concern and just prayers um, as they go through this. Most of you know Barbara McCall. Barbara McCall is our um, environmental service uh, supervisor on the Guilford campus, been with us forever and a day. Barbara lost her mom here recently. Um, is it New York? Did she go to New York uh, to be there for a funeral, which I think was this, was this past Friday? Uh, so Barbara will be back here soon, but just be aware that she, that she's taking that pretty hard. Um, uh, but just keep Barbara in your prayers. And most of you may or may not know this, but Victoria, uh, who's been uh, struggling for some time now, not knowing about her mother, but we did find out her mom has passed 
Uh, she found out, was it the week before last? Was it last week? I can't, was it last Wednesday? So uh, she lost contact, mom's from Ukraine, as, as well as Victoria. And sometime around middle end of March, she lost contact with her mom during the, the conflict. And so we've been holding out hope that everything was gonna be okay, but she got word. We don't know anything, uh, any backstory other than her mother has passed. Um, I think, is she back? Does Victoria come back? Okay. Um, it's, it's a tough subject for her. Uh, she, she loves y'all because you, you are really, in essence, an extension of her family. Um, but, you know, if you want to give her some love and let her know that you're thinking about her, I think that would go, go a long way. Just understand it's, it's extremely emotional for her uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, uh, Matt Bean, our Director of Independent Living, will be starting. Uh, so he, is, this guy is excited. Uh, we've been texting and emailing. Uh, so he'll be here tomorrow on campus uh, early in the morning. He'll go through orientation. Our, the state is at Friends Homes West right now. And um, so I've been over there all week. Donna, Donna Sprinkle, who's our Director of Health Services, uh, is recovering from surgery. She's doing wonderful. She has been in pain for eight years. She's pain free. So she had back surgery, so it worked. So she comes back half day starting next week. But we got our state survey over there now. Um, so I've been over there. And so Matt and I will be going over to West tomorrow afternoon to finish that up. And then he has some additional training tomorrow, but he will, I say, officially start on Monday. And I've got him kind of scheduled out for the next two to three weeks. Uh, going to resident committee meetings, board meetings, resident council, meeting with uh, his team. Um, so let's, I just want you to ask for a little bit of patience as he gets kind of established because it's going to be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, we're going to do a meet and greet uh, with Matt in here next Thursday on the 12th at 3 o'clock. And it's kind of a drop-in. He'll probably say something around 3.30 to the group. It's kind of like a drop-in type social. So if you have some time next Thursday at 3 o'clock, please stop in and and meet Matt. Um, one of the questions that came up over at Wes was, so what does he do? And more importantly, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, let's start with him first. Um, so the way we were set up before is, if you remember, Missy McGinnis was really, in essence, the, like the chief operating officer for the Guilford campus. She was responsible, nuts to bolts, independent living, all the way to healthcare. And one of the things that in healthcare, it's an extremely regulated environment. And it takes a lot of time and energy. And a lot of times what happens is when you're so focused on all the regulations, sometimes that bleeds over into what we do in independent living. So when, when Missy resigned, we took the opportunity to say, let's hire someone that uh, doesn't have to worry about healthcare. All they're focusing on is life within independent living. You, what is going on with you here on this campus and the West Campus? And let's put them in a position to work very closely with the committees, the resident boards, resident councils to make sure that we are meeting the mark, meeting the mark as it relates to life here from independent living. So that is his primary role. So who reports to Matt? So Susie's going to report to Matt. Maintenance, our director of maintenance will be reporting to Matt. Director of wellness will be reporting, dining, environmental services, and grounds. So when you think about match responsibility, we've got people in these various roles, dining, wellness, grounds, resident services, but they will all be reporting up to Matt, okay? Uh, and that's similar to the West Campus as well. Uh, some of you from time to time, after my chats will come up to me and go, if you don't quit talking about what's happening in three months or six months from now, I don't care about that. I wanna know what's happening today or tomorrow. I can't remember what's gonna happen in three months. You know, I don't wanna know that. But that's my role. So my role is working very closely with the Board of Trustees, working on the strategic plan, making sure that we're meeting our objectives and that Friends Homes is here 50 years from now. So when we start thinking about these chats, I'm, Matt's gonna start coming to these. Matt's gonna start talking to you from what's coming up the next day, week, months. I will continue to do my part talking about what's coming down the pipeline six months now, a year from now. So my role, and I'm hopeful with Matt coming on board, some of you may not want to see this, but I'm going to be more visible. I feel like for the last two years, all I've done has been behind a desk hiding out. 
um, and I'm kind of tired of that. And so if I can pull myself away from some of the things I'm getting into, let other people do that, it's going to allow me to get my ear a little bit more to the ground, be more visible, and be part of, uh, of the community. So we're keeping our fingers crossed on that end. But he starts tomorrow. I'm excited. I hope you are too. All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about spectrum, single digits. So, so we, had a, we had a little blip. We've had two blips, actually. Uh, for those that live in the townhomes, we had a blip on Thursday of last week where one, and I'm not a techie person, so I don't know the terminology, something blew up and it cost $9,000. That's all I know. Um, and so we had to get it in. It, it got installed and blah, blah, blah. So what we've done is we've ordered another one. So it's here. Uh, so God forbid if something happens again, we, we will be ready for it. Well, then on Sunday, we had a little microburst, I call it, a storm that came through and sent a power surge um, through the campus. And it knocked out uh, a lot. Knocked out our fire, knocked out our cameras, knocked out our TV. Um, and stuff like that happens. It, it's just going to happen. But we learned again, there are a lot of things that we have that uh, are not on like a battery backup. And so what happens is you put them on these surge protectors. So when you have these little blips, it doesn't shut off and then you gotta go through and reset it manually. So IT, our, our information technology, are working to go around and put these systems on battery backup and surge protectors. So when we have these blips, hopefully it will alleviate what we had on Sunday, which I'm not, I'm gonna tell you again, if it didn't impact you, count yourself lucky, cause it was bad. Uh, and we were scrambling because uh, it's good when things happen Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, but on weekend, on Sunday, between 1 and 5, not good. Not good. Especially trying to get, get a hold of anybody. Um, so I'm sorry for, for that, but we are continuing, hopefully, to uh, make progress to backfill those things so that if they do happen again, they will not be as, as extreme. So where are we? So... Five years ago, and this came up, so I just want to repeat it. Some of y'all might not care, but you need to listen to me because you may care here in about five minutes. So five years ago, we thought we had an out from Spectrum that we could get out of the contract. So we went out for bid. And we looked at Spectrum. We looked at a company called Inviacom that does senior living, high-speed internet. And we looked at North State. And we actually looked at AT&T. AT&T didn't really make it to the table. And when we got done, we selected and Viacom. Um, Viacom was partnered with a company called Single Digits. Single Digits does TV, telephone, things like that. So with the new construction, we signed on to do Viacom slash Single Digits with the understanding that when our contract ends in 2023 with Spectrum, we're gonna change over to this new company, Single Digits. What we discovered is that our Wi-Fi is so poor and Spectrum is not willing to work with us, we said, we can't wait till May 2023. We want you to come on in now, fix it. And that's what they're doing. So they're, they're at West now, they just finished up the Wellness Center, they're rolling out. They should have that project done by June, July. Then they're gonna come over here to Guilford, they're gonna start at Hobbs, and they're gonna work their way back, and we'll finish up at Whittier. They're gonna put in new high-speed internet, right, for our, for our residents. That's great, great news. Come next May, we are going to enter into agreement with them. We have not signed a contract for their TV and phone. Okay, so we're moving to them, but we're in negotiations right now from a price point. So whether you remember me telling you this or not, I'm going to say it again and listen to me because it impacts you. Spectrum is great because they're cheap. Anybody outside of Spectrum costs more money. And where we're going with costs more money. And so some of you in here uh, have moved in prior to 2018 and you, you're not paying anything for the technology package, right? If you moved in, I think it's 2017, 2018, you paid $50 a month. We have not gone up on that $50, although costs are going up. In 2023, we're gonna go up. And I'm not here to tell you how much we're gonna go up, but it's gonna go up something. Um, and we're negotiating with them now because they have a certain price point that they, they charge. And so we're trying to get that price point down and work with them. 
But even the people that are grandfathered, they will pay something. They're not going to pay the full amount, but they will most likely going to pay the difference that we're going to have to go up on. Because at the end of the day, I've got to put money in the budget somehow, some way to pay for this enhanced service. I should have a number for you by September of this year. Like I said, we're negotiating now. Um, at the end of the day, I know where all of our money comes from, and I'm trying to be a good steward that it is coming from you, uh, and we're working uh, diligently to, to, to um, finalize that. I will keep the resident board up to date as we're making progress, but uh, hopefully by September at the latest, I'll be able to give you a final, final number. But May of 23, we are moving to single digits. Anybody that's here at that time will be grandfathered in as far as, so I think our current residents get to triple play as part of their package, phone, television, and internet. Our new residents only get double play. They get internet and TV. Phones are going away, whether you want to accept it or not, phones are going away. So new residents coming in to our existing building after May will only be getting internet and um, TV. But our existing residents that are here in the building, we'll, we will still honor the triple play. So that, that came up and I wanna make sure I speak to that. When I open it up for questions, if you wanna ask me anything, please do. Just know that we're still working on, on finalizing some things. I don't know if anybody in here, did anybody here do the flight of honor this past last week? I don't think we recognize anybody, do we? I just wanna share with you, has anybody here ever participated in the flight of honor or gone to the airport to witness that? Just a, just a small handful. I'm gonna tell you, so the flight of honor, do, do, do we know what that is? Right, okay. So um, we actually had three residents from West that were recognized. Uh, one was from World War II, Vietnam, and the Cuban Missile Crisis. I had never experienced that. So I went to the airport last week to welcome them. I was so high after that event. I was full of so much pride watching these men and women and the plane, I should have did my research. The plane is always delayed. I didn't know that. So I showed up like at 6.15 and what time did they get in? Like 8? 30. Yeah, probably like 30. But anyway, but there was singing and there was chanting and people were just, I mean, just so much energy. And then when you see these men and women come and, you know, and especially when I think about Vietnam, because a lot of our men and women that came back from Vietnam was not really treated very well. But just to be recognized and acknowledged, it was so uplifting. I got home that night and my wife's like, I know you're tired. I said, no, I am jacked up. I just feel so honored and proud. Um, so the reason I share that with you, uh, whether you get an opportunity to participate, like physically participate and do the flight, or go and attend um, when, when they come back, try to do it because it, it, it was very reaffirming of how great great this country is and how great um, the men and women are that, that love it and support it. Booster update. So we're continuing to work with our pharmacy. I think some of you probably in here have already had your booster. I know I have. You know, you can always go out and get a booster shot at the pharmacies and stuff like that, but we're trying to have a booster clinic here. If you remember when we've done this in the past, it's not easy. We've got to work with our pharmacy. We've got to work with responsible parties for our healthcare residents. And we got to get information for you so we can plan on how many people um, are going to do it. Right now, do not write this date down. May 31st is a goal. We're shooting for a goal of May 31st, but there's a lot of things that got to happen for us to make that date work. So stay tuned to the polls, calling post, whatever, but we are shooting for a goal. There, there's, anyway, working toward it, so we want to give Teresa. So if you're interested in a booster clinic, you see Teresa, Say, hey, put my name down. Teresa I'll, I'll look. Cruz. Teresa Cruz, not Teresa Cox. Teresa Cruz. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Teresa Cruz. The other, the other TC. Um, let her know that you're, you're interested if and when we have that. May 17th, elections. In here, all right? I would tell you we're providing transportation, but if you can't, if you can't, you know, I'm being funny. But it's in here. I know. If, yeah, I'm trying. So, uh, you know, it... it Please vote, uh, it's important. We've got several uh, people running. So in here, May 17th, and thank you for those that support the polls. Um, I, I wanna give a, again, thank you for an absence of Charlie. 
working with us as we're trying to do work orders and trying to get things done. I know there's some hit or miss, but I want to remind you that 95% of items are really should go through the work order process. So if you have something going on in your apartments or whatever, please, please, right now, I guess you'll call Courtney, eventually you'll call Bernadette, but please put a work order in because we still, and I hear it, we still stop people in the hallway or even y'all come talk to me about it. And we have good intention, but getting it in the work order system is how we ensure that things get done. It allows us to track it. You stopping someone in the hallway says, oh yeah, I'll take care of that. They got to remember that between there and the time they get back. So please use the work order system, call it in. Um, if you have any holistic type issues that you believe are more of a community wide thing, um, please uh, work with your, your uh, the various uh, committees uh, that are appropriate. I'm very excited. Uh, next Tuesday, Matt and I are going to be meeting with John and his counterpart, uh, Carol, along with some other residents uh, here actually on this campus to talk about this concept of one community, right? We got Guilford, we got Wes, really this concept of one. Because at the end of the day, when we think about our committees, you know, we're moving forward and we want to make sure that we got people participating in the committees uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, that we have clerks for those committees, we have people taking minutes. So I'm very excited about having that meeting with them. So we, as we continue to think about what does it mean for friends homes to be connected? What does that feel like? What does that look like? So more to come on that. Um, the last, I believe, two things I have uh, related to Guilford and I'll open up for uh, questions or comments is uh, I do, I think um, Vernon shared some of me about the cemetery, as far as the area that we utilize, I still have got to find time uh, to get, because I still want to physically walk out there so that we can get someone out here to actually do the survey. So that has not been done yet. My goal is still to have a lease by the end of September of this year, but my next thing is to, to still walk that with somebody to uh, make sure we know what we want to have surveyed. And we've been having fun with the lights. Is Jerry in here? Because Jerry does a good job keeping me up to date. I, I'm still being told there's two lights. Um, we still, I don't know if this one over here has ever got fixed by Fry, the one that got fried. Um, I think they're still working on that one. And then we still have one over by Hobbs. Um, and uh, Julian actually texted me today and said Duke Power or Duke Energy is still working on it and they hope within two weeks that one will be fixed. Other than that, I don't know if we have any other lights that are out. <laughs> if you do, put a work order in. Uh, but I'm not aware of anything. And I think with that, I'm going to stop. I think I covered most things. Um, so again, if you have any comments or questions for the greater good, I'd love to open it up. And as I said, starting in June, it's going to be a tag team effort. <coughs> Matt and I are meeting with y'all on a um, monthly basis. So comments, questions, feedback. Teresa, to your left. Oh, it's not on? There we go. Arnie, I want to back you up on putting in work orders. I want to pay a compliment to our maintenance crew. Okay. The uh, system for heating and air conditioning in Whittier was not working this morning, and the staff was just too busy or did not realize it, but the ice cold air was co pouring into my wife's apartment. The temperature dropped from the high 70s to the high 60s, so it was very, very difficult. We went to music for pleasure at 10 o'clock. By the time we got back at 11.30, it was fixed. Great. Thanks, Don. I have one concern. Okay. Uh, I've been here for 11 years, Arnie. I've been on several committees. I was president and vice president of the board of directors for four years out of 11. I'm concerned about the comments in the latest board of directors meeting in which it was stated by you, I believe, okay. a strong interest in combining the committees. I urge the, that we proceed with extreme caution. As one buddy told me, he said, I'm not interested. And I don't think any of our grounds committee members are interested 
And what happens in a pool over at West that we can't see and don't utilize every day? What we're saying is don't remove us too far right. from the point of where we can make some influence. I think it has to be a direction from up, from, excuse me, from the ground up, not from the top down. I, I, I urge that with sincerity. I'm not trying to, oh, no. I know we should think about those things, but um, the, the grounds, for example, we spent thousands of dollars repairing the Whittier Courtyard. I've written a memo about the subject to the director of environmental services over a week ago. The weeds are now, again, shoulder high. Mm -hmm. That's not good. I mean, yes, sir. We need people to be walking around and noticing those things. Yes, sir. Thank you. For Thank you. No, 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 no. That's actually a good, great comment. And of course, I want to respond. But what I'm going to ask, say is that one of because I know what I have in my head, um, and I believe what's in my head. But the reason why we're meeting next Tuesday is working with those groups from West and Guilford, so I can try to articulate that, and so that we can kind of come to an understanding. And just like you said, Don, so then we can come back to the residents and hopefully further articulate really what we're trying to accomplish. So thank you for saying that, and uh, I hear you loud and clear about the courtyard, and I am aware of that, so thank you. Comments, questions? Not that I'm in any hurry for this, but I'm just wondering what the status is on the entrance off of Arcadia. <laughs> You see, I, don't, I didn't even bring it up, right? Because I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, well, I do know, hey, at least they're doing the sidewalks finally, because that's only been two and a half years. Um, so the comment was, what are we on closing off the entrance off Arcadia? Yep, I will let you know when I hear. I'm not even asking a question anymore. So uh, my understanding, they're just waiting to mobilize. And they told me they'll give me at least two weeks' notice. Does, does the city have to approve this? No, the city has approved the closure. We just have to get the contractor to mobilize the equipment to do what needs to be done. And the thing I'm nervous about, I'm just being very transparent, we ask for two weeks, and a lot of times with contractors, they show up and go, well, I'm here. Uh, but we said, you cannot, you can't just show up, you gotta give us notice. So they're supposed to give us two weeks' notice. Okay, one more question. Sure. Channel 13-9. Love it. <laughs> the, the, the reception of the picture is dismal. Right. Yeah, I'm right. wondering if, uh, what you're doing with the cable pulling. Yeah, so, so the Channel 1390, uh, the answer I'm going to give you is really is kicking the can a little bit. Uh, we, we continue to have issues with 1390. Uh, we've had issues. Uh, Spectrum, the, there's, a, there's a booster issue, there's a power type issue. Uh, Spectrum, in their great customer service aspect, is willing to come out and fix it if we extend the contract, which we're not willing to do. So with the new company that we're going to be transitioning to uh, in May, which in, that, that's a year from now, uh, they are actually going to be taking over our in-house channel. Uh, and actually, they're going to be giving us multiple channels. So what they said they can do is they're going to give us a channel that's just for dining. They're going to give us a channel that's just for programming, uh, for like uh, activities, so that we don't have to watch. If you just want to know about what's going on with activities, you don't have to watch everything else. So we're going to get probably three channels. So, but it's going to probably be a year. If we, but right now, Teresa and her team are still doing things to try to boost the signal, but the equipment we have is failing. Great question. I wanted to ask about the sidewalks, uh, which are finally happening out here. Uh, is there, will there be any impact on us as residents? Not directly. Um, I think they've already cut down the trees that are gonna cut down. We'll do some landscaping when the project is finished, up right around that berm area, if you will. And when you say impacting residents, other than you have some better accessibility, if you wanna use them, other than that, I'm not aware of anything. I think I might have shared with you one time, we were trying to get a sidewalk down Arcadia to connect up to this, but we would, it, would, it would be several hundred thousand dollars because we had to relocate a lot of utilities. 
So we're we're not there's no plans to put a sidewalk in right now. All right, any other comments or questions? Betty? Hi, um, I'm not sure whether our new uh, Missy mm -hmm. is going to be over both campuses. Thank you. Yes, he is. So Matt Bean, his title is Director of Independent Living and as for Friends Homes. So if you, if you think about our positions now, almost all of our positions, except Director of Nursing, they're over friends' homes, maintenance, wellness, housekeeping, grounds, dining. So Matt is over independent living for West and Guilford, and Donna Sprinkle will be over the director of health services. So she's over assisted living and skilled nursing for both campuses. Good question. Silence is okay. So uh, I think you saw I have moved my office. I'm in Susie's old office. Susie is established, and if you haven't seen her office, it looks beautiful. And her and uh, Angela did a great job with Matt. So Matt's office is where my old office used to be. So um, all that has transpired. All right, anything else? All right, hey, I, right when I conclude, I just wanna tell you this. I, I think I might share this in April, but I'm gonna say it again. A lot of things are coming to a head. This is gonna be a great year, a great year. Y'all have been through a tremendous amount. Y'all have weathered the storm. So as we kind of come to a conclusion, as staffing gets ran back up, as we start inviting our families and friends back in, as we, as we start living again, just hang on, hang tight, and let's just have some, have some fun. So thank y'all for all that you do. God bless you. Thank you.